As they say in the UK, let's get cracking with implement data loss prevention. Again, pretty large percentage, almost a third of this exam, 30 to 35%. And within this, there are three subsections we will break down. Create and configure data loss prevention policies. Implement and monitor Microsoft Endpoint data loss prevention and manage and monitor data loss prevention policies and activities. And within those three sections, if I had to hit one the hardest, just looking at the bullets listed, the very first one, create and configure data loss prevention policies. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bullets versus four in the other two. So that first section for creating and configuring data loss prevention policies really is half of this whole section, even though there's three kind of areas to break down. So we'll cover these. Let's dive into it uh, because there's a lot of things. The good news is um, when I was searching on docs, found a lot of pretty solid hits on these. And I love it when they label something and it's searchable. At least I got a clue where to go. So though, again, those are all on the aka.ms slash sc-400 study guide. Create and configure DLP or data loss prevention policies. So in order to comply with business standards and industrial regulations, it's critical that your organization protect sensitive information to prevent its inadvertent disclosure. Sensitive information can include financial data, health records, credit card numbers, social security numbers, and employee evaluations. Use data loss prevention or DLP policies to identify, monitor, and automatically protect sensitive information across Microsoft 365. Microsoft DLP helps prevent users from accidentally rather than intentionally sharing sensitive content. With DLP policies, you can identify sensitive information across many locations particularly what we we'll talk about for this exam across Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, Microsoft Teams, and Windows devices. It can monitor and protect sensitive information in Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook, prevent accidental sharing of sensitive information, educate users on staying compliant without interrupting their workflow. You can create DLP alerts and reports showing content that matches your organization's policies. So what's the process or recommended way to do this? First, you start in test mode without the policy. Use the DLP reports and incident reports to assess the impact of your policy. It's kind of like try before you buy it or use it. You can use DLP reports to view the number, location, type, and severity of policy matches. Based on the results, then you can fine tune the rules as needed. Configuring a DLP policy in this way will not impact user productivity. Number two, you move to test mode with notifications and policy tips. Adding notifications and policy tips gives you the opportunity to educate users about your compliance policies and prepare them for the rules that are going to be applied. At this stage, you can also ask users to report false positives so you can further refine the rules. And finally, step three, start the full enforcement. The actions and the rules are then applied and the content is protected once full enforcement is in place. Continue to monitor the DLP reports and any incident reports or notifications to make sure that the results are what you intended. On this slide, we cover the what you should do and the why. For the how, that is configuring the policies, make sure you check the related links on my blog of links at https colon whack whack aka dot ms slash sc-400 study guide. Data loss prevention policies can be used for non-Microsoft Cloud apps as part of the Microsoft 365 DLP suite of features. You can use DLP policies for non-Microsoft Cloud apps to monitor and detect when sensitive data is used and shared via non-Microsoft Cloud apps. Using these policies provides visibility and control that helps prevent risky behavior. 
You can create DLP policies for non-Microsoft Cloud apps in two ways. One, create file policies in the Cloud App Security Portal. And two, create DLP policies in the Compliance Center and specify Microsoft Cloud App Security as the location. File policies allow control of the actions you can execute in MCAS when a policy match is found, whereas DLP policies allow you more control over non-Microsoft Cloud apps. If you want more control over the SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business Cloud apps, you should use the SharePoint Online or OneDrive for Business portals. When implementing DLP policies, it can be difficult to determine their full impact on the users of your environment. Test mode exists, so administrators can create new DLP policies and monitor the impact and effectiveness of the policy to end users. The results will be delivered to you in the form of emails containing incident reports whenever a rule inside the policy matches content in the defined locations. Analyzing these reports will help you to determine if the policy is functioning as intended or if you need to adjust the policy before activating it. To enable test mode for your DLP policy, you need to edit the DLP policy and go to the test or turn on the policy page. Once you have seen the impact of a policy in the reports dashboard, you can modify the policy to adjust its sensitivity and add exceptions if you identify any words that consistently trigger false policies. For example, the frequent use of the word product number would indicate people are discussing a product number, not a license number. While a policy is implemented in test mode, the actions are not executed. You can use exceptions to limit the number of false positives. After you have monitored the alerts for some time and adjusted the sensitivity of your policy, you should keep the policy in test mode and activate the policy tips for some time. This will allow your users time to help refine the policy further by reporting false positives. Implement and monitor Microsoft Endpoint DLP. Endpoint Data Loss Prevention, or Endpoint DLP, extends the activity monitoring and protection capabilities of DLP to sensitive items on Windows 10 devices. Once devices are onboarded into the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center, the information about what activities like copy into USB devices or printing users perform on sensitive items is visible to those who have access to Activity Explorer in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. You can also take the extra step of auditing or restricting those activities via data loss prevention policies. Before you can include Windows 10 devices in DLP policies, you need to onboard them or enable data collection. To enable data collection from a device, the account associated with that device must be a member of any of these roles, global admin, security admin, or compliance admin. Onboarding and offboarding are handled via scripts you download from the Device Onboarding Center in Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. The center has custom scripts for each of these deployment methods. Local script for up to 10 machines, good old group policy, Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, Mobile Device Management slash Microsoft Intune, or VDI onboarding scripts for non-persistent machines. Global Endpoint DLP settings apply to all existing and new DLP policies that protect content on Windows devices. But these settings only apply to content impacted by DLP policies, not every item in, for example, the user's documents folder. Examples of settings include uh, things like file path exclusions, uh, which excludes uh, specific paths from DLP monitoring, alerting, and policy enforcement. Unallowed apps, which prevents specific applications from accessing files protected by your policies. And you can use access by unallowed app setting to define what happens when one of your users tries to access protected data by using one of the specified apps. Unallowed browsers, which prevents browsers from accessing files protected by your policies. When you configure this setting, users will be prompted to access protected files using Microsoft Edge. 
you can block any of the Windows 10 browsers included in the policy, or you can add your own. Although you can block a single browser, consider blocking all web browsers that do not respect endpoint DLP policies. And service domain restrictions, even if you've prevented all unsupported browsers from accessing sensitive data, sometimes you might also want to block supported browsers like Microsoft Edge from uploading protected content to specific web services. Service domain restrictions control whether sensitive files protected by your policies are allowed or blocked from accessing specific service domains from Microsoft Edge. Choose block to prevent certain domains from accessing these files or allow to specify safe domains. Data loss prevention policies can take protective actions to prevent unintentional sharing of sensitive items. When an action is taken on a sensitive item, you can be notified for by configuring alerts for DLP and you can use the new DLP alert management dashboard in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center to view alerts, events, and associated metadata for DLP policy violations. When a DLP policy alert informs you about a DLP violation, it can mean many things. Not all alerts mean that data loss is imminent or was prevented. DLP policies will not make decisions about the reason for attempting to share protected data, but they will alert you if a violation is observed. DLP reports can help you identify users who create high number of matches. There may be multiple reasons and your role as a compliance administrator is to evaluate if the matches are benign or malevolent. On the DLP policy matches report page and the DLP incidents report page, you will see a chart and a table displaying information about their respective occurrences. To analyze these DLP reports, you can break down the charts separated by either affected service, enforced action, or applied policy. When using the DLP policy matches reports, you should use the filters to limit the report to specific policies. This will help you reduce the number of matches displayed and focus on the impact of selected policies in your organization. To view DLP reports in the Compliance Center, you must be assigned to the Security Reader for Exchange and View-Only DLP Compliance Management. Members of your compliance team who read DLP policy reports need permissions to the Compliance Center. By default, your tenant admin will have access to this location and can give compliance officers and other people access to the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center without giving them all the permissions of a tenant admin.